Hello and thank you for joining me for this uh, video. This is a follow-up to my shadow work video that I did about a week ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it somewhere for you. This video is going to contain a distance Reiki session focused on helping us if we are in a period of shadow work. And you might, have, you might be in this period of doing this inner work or experiencing these maybe darker times or facing these demons and not even really be actively participating in shadow work. You're not like, oh, I'm going to sit out to do this. You might already be there, you know, like that can happen as well. Um, it's basically going to be a focus when we're dealing with these things, when we're dealing with these kind of darker or more negative aspects or qualities within our person or experiences that we've had. A lot of doubts, a lot of fear and anxiety, confusion kind of bubble to the surface. We're trying, it's almost like if you could picture, um, let's call it like a yin yang or a coin or something that has two sides. It's almost like you don't know which way is up because you have like two sides to your personality in a sense, you know, two extremes of your personality. And as you're kind of wrestling with each of these dimensions, you know, it's kind of, you kind of lose your equilibrium a little. So we want to be able to have these clear thoughts, know what's truly real to us, still be open to changing our thoughts and our beliefs, of course, because this is all for the greater good. This is all to rise raise us to the next level, raise us to a more complete level of ourselves. So that's going to be what the focus is about for this Reiki session and also just adding comfort to it because it can be, it can be like a scary or challenging, depressing, there's a lot of things that could come up that we, that having some assistance with would be wonderful. I'd like to say that shadow work isn't something that's typically taught when you're learning energy work. Um, for example, when I was getting my Reiki certifications and stuff, we didn't touch on shadow work at all. I would say that shadow work is definitely more in line with the shamanistic um, philosophy, shamanistic practices, because shamans, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with that term, that's a very general term. There's shamans from all parts of the world and they all have their own very unique practices and beliefs and guides and all of that but the basic premise of shamanism from my understanding is it's more natural it's definitely more primal it's more grounded it's more earth energy it's more um this level that we're on this dimension and working with that that's not to say that we don't work with the energy that's in this dimension when we're doing something like reiki which if you're going to kind of generalize in a sense, we'll call that more of like a crown based type of connection to spirit where shamanism would probably be more along the lines of like a root based grounding and working with the energies of the earth. If you've never seen one of my videos before, thank you so much for watching. I'm a master teacher, Reiki practitioner, energy worker. I work out of the New York City, New Jersey area. If you'd like to get in touch with me through social media, we could do that on Snapchat. Instagram or Facebook and if you'd like to check out my services and get in touch with me through my website or make a donation you could do that through my website which is luninate.com. Okay so back to shamanism like I said there it's a very general term there's shamans from all over the globe that have their own unique practices they're um, they're typically seen and depicted as like either you know being out in the woods and like you go to see them when you need some help with something you could be looking at it through like a psychedelic or like if you want to do like an ayahuasca trip or whatever there's shamans that facilitate that and they work with herbs and these like psychedelic um, plants and mushrooms and whatnot like that teas and stuff there's shamans that date back to ancient Kemet there are shamans in the uh, druid type areas and things like that so they're really all over the place a major thing that you will see in this shaman type of world though is balance and facing fear so a lot of the times when someone is getting into shamanism let's say that they've like found a teacher and they're like they're really into it and that's like something that they want to take to the next level not just learn about it but learn like practice it and things like that there's a lot of fear facing like they will take you to these like really spooky places and like cause you to like experience these these like very deep rooted emotions and fears and um kind of like looking death in the eye like looking fear in the eye and kind of like 
just like laughing it off or like being stronger or letting yourself crumble in a sense and be reborn. So there's a lot that goes into that. If you're interested in shamanism, I would highly suggest just doing research before you really start like messing around at all. Doing your own personal shadow work and stuff is a totally different story. I don't mean like that. I mean like truly getting into shamanism. It's, it's very, uh, dark it's isolating i would say you know like like i said i don't have personal experience myself you would want to study neo shamanism like modern shamanism and also traditional shamanism and and see you know you need to really educate yourself when you're doing things like this because it's it's very sacred it's very sacred and you don't want to take it lightly or just you don't want to treat it like a novelty i don't consider myself a shaman i don't consider myself really anything specific you know i kind of consider my way of thought to be universal but like you know it's my universe like I'm the nexus of my universe <laughs> so it's all very personal for me I do resonate with the term spiritual alchemy I think that that's really great it's a cool word it's a cool phrase and it's really all-encompassing you know you take what you what resonates with you from all this learning that you're doing all these you know like research Buddhism research uh, Gnosticism, research shamanism, research astrology, or palm tree, occult knowledge, esoteric knowledge, ancient cultures. Do your research and find what resonates with you. I would just, I think that that's always the best way to do things. Um, religion is kind of, you know, I have like, I have a love for it in a certain sense because I do believe that it's one of the most important. The idea of spirituality is very important to us as human beings, being in this, you know, in these bodies, in this environment, having these experiences, needing something to understand beyond what's tangible, what's physical and dense here. However, organized religions tend to be, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, you know, like I think it's good if it's good for you then it's wonderful, you know. I definitely don't resonate with every single thing of any one religion, so how could I choose something like that? I take what I what resonates with me, I keep that, and I build my own, you know. It's custom. It's a custom uh, way of thought, and it works out well for me. I think that it's kind of the way to go for everyone, but I don't judge, and, you know, I'm only here to help um, be a friendly face along your path of your, you know, spiritual journey or just someone that try to help you relax at night when you're trying to go to bed, so. All right, so back to shadow work. It has a lot of benefits. When we go through all this and once we see these things within ourselves, we're much less judgmental of others, of ourselves as well, because we've really seen it all. And we, we love it, like that expression, like warts and all kind of thing. And it makes us much more empathetic so that when we're seeing someone going through a challenging time, going through a dark phase, we're not going to look at them and be like, that's you, like you're bad and da 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 and I don't like your choices. You're going to be like, oh, this is a moment of time in your life and this is how you are and you're growing and you're evolving and you're going to get out of it. You know, like you become more, more helpful, more just more supportive in general even if you're not actively doing anything to help these people you're not you're not projecting anything negative upon them and you're not judging them so that's like very beneficial when we face our our dark sides or our these anything like again like these addictions these negative qualities that we have that are very powerful and we have a choice to either transmute them into positivity if that's the way that they seem to want to go or that what's what makes sense for what the issue is or you can use what it is use that negativity use that fuel to i guess it is transmuting in a way but change it or adapt it or guide it to a place where it's still very powerful it still is what it is but it's productive and it's not holding you back or dropping you down this like ladder or setting you back on your path or anything like that so it's just a really good practice to get into i don't think that everyone in their lifetime even experiences stuff like this and there is definitely a level of contradiction here because a program that I'm about or a series that I'm about to put out is a way of training your thoughts to not be negative to only focus on positive and that has a lot of right to it as well however 
you know, I, I, I definitely go with the whole, like, you need to understand yourself. Like, if the meaning of life is know thyself, like, you need to know the darkness as well. And I feel that it allows us to be whole and complete. So since all the shadow work stuff is about facing our demons, finding our weaknesses, finding these challenges, bringing all these things to the light to be dealt with, releasing what needs to be, like, this, it's like, it's like taking out the trash and then organizing what's left, if that makes sense. So it can be quick challenging, hence this Reiki session. I'm going to show you some stones that I have picked out for this purpose. And it's funny because a lot of these are like my all-time favorite stones. So the big one we'll show first. This is a light, light smoky. It's not, or pale smoky. Um, I use this often when I'm doing work with clients. I kind of like put it down below, like near the feet or the earth star to pull out negativity. But that's what I use it for, for moving, for shifting negativity around and directing energy and things like that. So since it's, it's smoky, smoky quartz is great for earth energy for protection it's very comforting um it has a really like lovely homey vibe for me like being at like if you had a cabin in the woods with like a roaring fire and <laughs> like your favorite like warm drink to sip on <laughs> tea or like yummy spiced wine or something that's how smoky quartz makes me feel i just love it for that so it's comforting and also dealing with these negative things this is my fluorite octahedron. I chose fluorite for, there, like I said, there can be a lot of confusion. We can feel confused, like, who am I? What's going on? Like, because you are changing. You're, you're changing, you're shifting, you're, everything is, is adapting and finding a new place. So surely you're gonna have some confusing thoughts. Don't be, be okay with that, that's okay. Don't judge that. So I incorporated fluorite for that purpose of the like clarity of thought and trust and whatnot. One of my all-time favorite stones, this is a piece of Nuumite. It's a palm stone. They have these beautiful little golden flecks of lepidorescence. It's a volcanic stone. It might be the oldest, if not the second oldest mineral uh, like that can be traced in any way, I guess. Um, on the earth, it's, it's this like, I think they're found mostly in Iceland or Greenland, if I'm not mistaken. And it's extremely protective protective of its owner even if you can believe that it's so dark it's great for manifesting but it's good for when we're going into those dark places and shadow work is done within our minds you know like there's action involved but it's all in here so i like new umite for that and also just the protection that it gives us and it's incredibly grounding and it and it puts a shield this shield around us when i carry a piece like that it's not a good idea if i need to use my intuition or any type of clairvoyance or anything because it's going to block things from getting to me but it's going to block me from getting out as well so if you're doing shadow work and you don't want to be spreading around or whatever not that that's a risk but if you can imagine new might would be a great choice for you this one i can't even tell you why i chose this i just felt maybe the earth energy this is a um star ruby very earthy and I don't know I was just guided to bring out a ruby for this here's a piece of covalite which is very very dark blue it's hard to see with some pyrite in it and it's wonderful for breaking through it's a great breaking through type stone again it's also very dark which kind of goes with that whole going within vibe another one for seeing within Labradorite. Labradorite is excellent for this. Like, just look, just look at this freaking thing. It's like the most magical stone you've ever seen, right? Like, how can this be? How is this real? It's so incredibly beautiful. Seeing within, seeing through the layers. This guy wanted to come out again. This is a piece of braceated jasper, another one of my all-time favorite stones. And this will help us with hope and faith again, with like keeping the faith, like yes, you're doing this dark work, yes, it's not comfortable, yes, you're, you're, encompass you're, you're accepting all these things that you encompass, these, all these facets, but that's okay, <laughs> you know, like it's all going to work out in the end, like it's going to, it's all for a greater good. Here we have a piece of astrophyllite with these beautiful blue flashes. This is another one for trans, um, transformation, breaking through. So this has a bit of the same, 
seem like covalent in a sense. Sometimes I interchange them if I'm doing some work with someone or if I want to just carry it throughout my day. Here we have Herkimer Diamond. I was guided to use this because, again, like this is a lot of dark stuff, but like there is light there too. There's, you know, if you picture a yin yang with the dots, like there is always good within bad and bad within good. And this just serves as a reminder for that for us that yes, we're primal, yes, we're working with these earth energies, these, these instinctual um, things that are going on within us. But of course, we're still, we are spirit. We are always connected to spirit, so. And this one is a small piece <laughs> of Moldavite. It has this extraterrestrial vibe. Um, it's extremely powerful. And it's so incredibly beautiful. It's like mossy green kind of glass color. And I brought this out again for like transformation because that's what we're doing. And I'd like to just point out that like this can take a while. Like I this this is not the type of thing that you're sure like you could be like I'm gonna dedicate a week to shadow work. I'm gonna dedicate a month. Like I'm gonna do it. absolutely you can totally do stuff like that. I think that that's super cool and it works out really well. However, like, don't think you're going to be done. Like, you're not going to get to the bottom of your shadows, you know, in like a week, in a month. Like, this is a lifelong kind of process in a sense, or maybe not lifelong, but it's it's something that comes up and down, you know? It's it's like maintenance. It's not just, oh, well, you know, I'm done. <laughs> I worked everything out. Yeah, no, we're cool. Me and my demons, we're cool. <laughs> like, there's more to it than that, and it changes, and you change, and your circumstance changes, and your environment changes, and you interact with different things that bring up all new shit to you. <laughs> so you're not, you're never really truly done, if I can say that, if I, if I may be so bold. <laughs> so I'm going to clear our space. We're, we're going to make our space sacred at this point. We're going to use this thingy bowl, then some smudge, and then we're going to do our distance reiki. A big thing with shamanism is drumming. I just didn't know how to do that without it getting like unbearably louder. But if if you're into it, you can you can drum. It could be like on your leg even, just something repetitive to induce a trance of sorts. A meditative trance would work just as well. Sorry for the noise in my videos. It's been kind of tricky. I'm going to do something about it. If I get lights, I can do it at night. I can record at night. Okay. Alright, so now we have our Palo Santo, which is perfect for this. Sacred wood has just such a divine smell. I'm so into this. Ooh, <laughs> it popped at us. This cleanses our environment creates this sacred space again for us. It smells so amazing. So always when we're doing this, this is a safe space for you. If you feel you need any release, if you want to laugh, cry, ha, twitch, <laughs> like whatever you feel drawn to do or whatever happens, like that's okay. This is safe. It's totally fine. Sometimes I find when I'm doing this type of stuff at night, which you probably are, <laughs> or you might, you might be, 
sometimes it's almost a visual thing that happens. Like I can visualize myself like standing in the woods screaming or like under a lake at the bottom of a lake just like screaming <laughs> like or whatever. Something to release and let it out and give us this this opportunity to really like get stuff out and visualization is very powerful so if you'd like to receive this energy all you have to do is say aloud or to yourself I would like to be a part of this Reiki session I would like to receive this energy there is no space and time and energy and intention so if you can picture a drop box that's kind of what I'm doing Put it there and you can just pick pick it up if you if you'd like to tap into it. I like to visualize when I'm working with someone my energy going up like like a light and then their energy, wherever you may be, going up like a light or this like connection, and then they somehow meet or intersect or there's a like a a beam or something that touches. So if that helps you, then maybe that would be better for you too. Or help you. Okay. In perfect health and comfort and alignment, I send this energy to you. And if you'd like to also incorporate your guides and welcome your guides into this session, please do that. We all have guides of, of sorts, all different sorts, and they're here to help us. All we need to do is really ask them. So, angels or, you know, relatives, ancestors, whatever. I have this little selenite wand, it's average size. I'm just gonna use my proxy here, my proxy camera to comb through your aura to remove anything that you're dealing with right now. While you're facing <laughs> these less than comfortable qualities. A 
lot on our shoulders, a lot on our back, <laughs> always. Focusing a lot on your root and earth star, which is the chakra below your feet, about six inches or so. These are pretty easy to find and they're very, very beneficial. You can get one for yourself. They're fairly inexpensive. And you just kind of like run it through your aura like this. It feels really good. You'd be surprised. It has a high salt content, so it's purifying, but it also just has all these other really beautiful like lunar, feminine cleansing energies. It doesn't hold on to negativity, so it never needs charging, um, cleansing. And it helps to clean your other crystals as well. <sighs> okay, so we'll do a fluffing. And just comb it through. <sighs> okay. All right. We made it. <laughs> I hope that you found this video beneficial. Um, Please let me know. Please leave me a comment and let me know, like, are you doing your shadow work? Do you feel like you've kind of realized you're doing shadow work without, like, actively making the choice to? Um, if you have any tricks or stones that you like or things that you like to do, visualizations, maybe meditations or something, I would love to hear it. And also, please subscribe if you're interested in this stuff. I'm sorry that, like, it's really, it makes me very uncomfortable to, uh, ask you guys for stuff but please comment if you like this video please subscribe if you vibe <laughs> please give me thumbs up and let me know that like this is what you're in you know that you're, you appreciate it and stuff because it means so much to me and it really does help me out um so yeah i don't want to ramble too much here there'll be plenty of time for that in my other videos <laughs> i hope that you have a wonderful evening thank you so much for checking out this video i really appreciate it my dog's barking and hope that you found it beneficial. I hope you I hope you enjoyed it. So as always, thank you and namaste.